Before I could even think straight, the heavy bouncing of my breasts finished the job of waking me up. <laughs> what did I just read? <laughs> I love starting these videos confused, and lucky enough for me, it happens every single day. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing fantastic. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Guys, I need to tell you this right now. I just sat down to make this video and what did I find at the top of the week on the Men Riding Women subreddit? A Men Riding Women bingo card from one of you guys in my subreddit with like 7,000 upvotes. <laughs> That's insane. Like for real, Vincey Worldwide. So yeah, we'll put that on the screen right now and if you want to use it for this video and future men riding women videos absolutely feel free thank you so much baguettes and sin for making it i really appreciate it this is just so surreal the comments that i found on reddit the other day now finding this on here it blows my little brain so yeah that definitely made my day thank you so much i hope you're all doing fantastic we're about to get freaked out with some men riding women and yeah feel free to play some bingo enjoy as if something had only been waiting for her to understand this. The sky lit up in a silent storm of bright contrails. Trisha stared, neck tilted, eyes wide, arms crossed over her breastless chest. And by the way guys, that's a Stephen King one, which I'm pretty sure is a box on the bingo card. Actually, I'm just going to keep this bingo card open while I do this video. I'll play along with you guys. But yeah, that's one thing I've learned from this subreddit. Stephen King really likes to talk about birds. A male fairy tale. Once upon a time, a prince asked a beautiful princess, Will you marry me? The princess said, No! And the prince lived happily ever after and rode motorcycles and banged skinny, long-legged, big boobied broads and hunted and fished and raced cars and went to naked bars and dated women half his age and drank whiskey, beer and Captain Morgan and never heard bitching and never paid child support or allergies and bang cheerleaders and kept his house and guns and ate spam <laughs> and potato chips and beans and blew enormous farts and never got cheated on while he was at work and all his friends and family thought he was cool as hell and he had tons of money in the bank and left the toilet seat up. The end. Oh, that doesn't sound like a fairy tale. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, not very nice. <laughs> icky, icky, gross, gross, yuck. There's nothing like like the first time. Nothing. You don't know what life is until you undress a woman for the first time. A button at a time. Like peeling a hot sweet potato on a winter's night. Bro, don't write erotic novels when you're hungry. Oh, women, my favorite. They're just like peeling a hot sweet potato. <laughs> yeah, that's not weird or creepy or nothing. No, no, no. He could feel the warm body next to him. In the half light, he started to explore. She had small but firm breasts with inverted nips. She was skinny. He could feel her bones. No, she was not skinny. She was malnourished. No wonder she had eaten every scrap of food on her plate. Living on the farm, there was never a shortage of food. He had never imagined it might be different in the cities. As he explored further, she responded. When they had finished, she lay on her side and proceeded to sleep. It had never been discussed whether she would stay all night. However, if he wanted to stay, he he was happy with that. He lay thinking, what kind of society did we have where decent, educated women have to sell themselves to survive? Uh, yeah, so this woman is like malnourished and starving, but at least she's got firm boobies. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we have a simple one. A woman with pale, creamy mummy boobs. <laughs> like, oh, it's so descriptive. It paints such a picture in my mind. And yeah, Vincey is uncomfortable. Comfortable. Annie held up her hand. Oh, sorry, one more thing. She turned to Du Bois. Martin, we have about 15 minutes of personal time after this lesson and before our next training exercise. Do you want to meet up in the bathroom down the hall and have sex? I find that agreeable, said Du Bois. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro. Okay, cool. Have they ever talked to somebody in real life? That's crazy. <laughs> People do not talk like that. That was so 
robotic and so misogynistic. Hello, Martin. We have 15 minutes to spare. Would you like to have intercourse with me? Come with me, Martin. I am going to show you the time of your life. By Garth Stein. According to some of the Reddit commenters who have apparently read the book, this is told from the point of view of a dog. So-and-so had a full set of breasts for milking and hips wide enough for childbirth and so was, for all intents and purposes, an adult, but who still acted like a child, always asking for permission to do things. This girl, not yet a woman, was named Anika. From the point of view of a dog? Really? <laughs> There's always something new on here. I read something crazier every single day. Her figure had filled out. The slim figure that she had from before had been replaced by a giant hourglass figure with long sleeves. Her hips were present without being too full and her breasts easily reached a whopping G cup, both of which stood out more thanks to her striped clothing. How did all this happen? He asked as he threw his hands out, gesturing to all of her. And apparently this is from a fan fiction. Like, yeah, this one isn't too bad, but it is so obvious that that's written by a guy. April was on the heavy side, but not too fat. Wow. <laughs> that's not a good start. She had big hips and a large ass and her hair fell straight down. There was something about the size of her. Rugged. Like she could handle an ape. Her mental deficiency was attractive to me because she didn't play games. And then further down, I grabbed her and kissed her. While I was kissing her, she looked right into my eyes. I broke off. Let's bang, I said. I have an infection, said April. What? It's sort of a fungus. Nothing serious. Could I catch it? It's kind of a milky discharge. Could I catch it? I don't think so. Okay, let's bang. I don't know if I want to bang. It'll feel good. Something, let's go into the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> icky, icky. That's so bad. I just don't understand how an author can write that and be like, oh yeah, this is good. <laughs> I'm such a great author. Okay, so this one is a woman author. She had the kind of nips that men and babies dreamed about. What? Hold on, I want to read the rest of this. Rosy tinted areolas gave way to extravagantly protruding tips that no question about it had to stay pointed 24-7. Hot or cold, rain or shine. Stella Lane, conservative economist, had you-know-what star nips and he wanted them in his mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know how to feel right now. Mary lingers a moment behind Julia, allowing herself a view of Julia's broad, graceful back. The twin moons of her <laughs> <laughs> Twin moons. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, Julia has the broad, graceful back with the twin moons of her ass. Like, twin moons? That doesn't even sound good. These authors are trying to be sexy and erotic, but it's not working. Lily may be my twin sister, but we couldn't look or act more different. While Lily is tall, 5 foot 10, super skinny, and has straight white blonde blonde hair and blue eyes. I'm short, only 5 foot 2 with dirty blonde wavy hair and green eyes. I'm skinny too, but I have more curves than my sister. My sister is actually pretty flat chested, but you wouldn't know it with her super padded push-up bras. Oh yeah, that's relevant information, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry guys, I didn't realize we were on the boob subreddit. That's all they talk about. It's crazy. Like if you're learning about a character in a novel, you really don't need to know the size of their boobs. What are you doing here? Asked the prettiest. Her flushed face had the roundness of a girl barely in her teens and her hair was parted in ribbons. But her breasts, which she aimed proudly outward, were those of a grown woman. A lucky grown woman. <laughs> and that's another woman author. I've only got one thing to say. Wholesome memes. When someone answers your stupid question without mentioning that you're stupid. Oh. Oh, thank you. I'm a moron, but you still love me. That's so sweet, and that's something that I can definitely relate to. Like, I'm not calling myself dumb, but I do say some dumb stuff sometimes. But, you know, I think everybody does. We're all stupid. When a toddler says that you're their favorite, a blessing from the little one. Oh, thank you. These memes are so good after men writing women. Beautiful. Girl gives a compliment to a boy. The boy for the next five years. <laughs> I'll cherish it. 
minutes. Every time I'm feeling down, I'm going to remember this. And I think that's a beautiful place to leave today's video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again to Baguettes and Sin for making the bingo card. I really, really appreciate it. Like, that means so much to me. It was such a nice surprise to see that. And yeah, I'm super grateful. Vincey is well and truly worldwide. Okay, today's comment of the day goes to Annalisa Norman, and it's from my latest Bad Women's Anatomy video. These people need to stop exposing our secrets that we're actually werewolves. Oh my god. So yeah, I'm sorry women, but um, I've told everybody that you're actually werewolves. Surely that's true. Alright everybody, have a beautiful rest of your day, have a wonderful night, and I'll see you tomorrow at the exact same time with more fun videos. And you know, just look after yourself because you deserve it. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs>